Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Yes, this is part two of the Imperial Pumpkin Ale and Lager. Yes, that's the ale, that's the lager. Definitely appreciate it. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. I'm sorry part one ran so long, but like I said, it was such a long day. I took a shower, changed clothes, took a nap. It was exhausting. It was very hot, very humid. So I just wanted to show you this before we go into taste testing. I know the taste testing is gonna be a matter of seconds for you, at least a week for me. First, the color, don't let the color bother you because you can see the darkness up here and up here it looks a lot darker, but that's a lot clearer. The lager is very, very clear for a brown type ale. Over here, I've got a lot of like haze and something kind of sitting in suspension, but the majority of the pumpkin is packed down nice and tight. Over here, the pumpkin is kind of almost like it's being helped with the lager yeast, kind of lift you up. Come on, let's lift you up. So. Next year, I'm thinking I might use a little less pumpkin because I don't remember it being packed this not so tight and being up so high because that's gonna be a nightmare for filtering. So I'm gonna try something and this is why I'm kind of sharing the video. First, in the keg, I'm using Trader Joe's bourbon vanilla. I'm gonna put two full teaspoons in the keg purge the CO2, dump it over. I'm also gonna add some gelatin. I wasn't going to initially, but I'm hoping the gelatin might pull some more of this pumpkin out of the suspension while leaving the flavor behind. I don't wanna eat my beer, I wanna drink my beer, you know what I'm saying? So, number two, how am I gonna filter this? And what's the ABVs? Well, first of all, I'm gonna to try to use these for my filters. It's a coarse and a fine. I'm terrified it's going to be a nightmare. And I see some water over here after cleaning it several times. So I'll have to get that out, not a big deal. And I'm gonna dump it through the air side because of course I already have my floating dip tubes in there. So, and I'm just gonna crank it up to about 30 PSI for about two, maybe two and a half days and then bring it on down and see how it does. So I'm gonna try to speed carbonate it the best I can, but the lazy man style, not the you know high speed fast, one hour, hour and a half. First of all, how did they do? As you saw, I kind of messed up on my gravities. I kind of messed up on estimating certain things in Beersmith. It was because I showed that I had added the eight ounces of, or 10.5, which I lowered to eight ounces of dark brown sugar. That dark brown sugar I did add after the fact and shook the, oh, what I did to these, it'll, uh, yeah, a lot of commitment. <laughs> shook the hell out of these. I shook the hell out of these literally twice a day, every day for almost a week. Yes, I just wanted to keep the pumpkin in suspension as much as possible. And it was funny because I had done it for four days and I read an article talking about hops and that when you're dry hopping, the more the hops move around, the more aroma and flavor you're gonna get from them. So the same thing with the pumpkin and the pumpkin spices, the more it's moving around in there, the more flavor I'm expecting to get from it. So yeah, I just kept with what I was already doing. So first of all, let's do the ale. The ale finished at 1.084, lager 1.079. I did have higher efficiencies without the brew in a bag. Yes, a lot of people have been great with comments and we may do another test in the future with a double crush and see how that goes. But without doing a double crush, a 0 0.0375 of an inch, the ale did much better on efficiencies, but the fermentation actually stalled out a little earlier than I expected. So we went from 1.084 to a final gravity of 1.019. I was getting 2.0, but the tilt had some gunk on it. And yeah, so easy dins to the rescue and easy dins. And now for some reason the tilt's green, but it's <laughs> 0.019. That puts us at 8.7, Imperial Pumpkin. Over here, we were only at a 1.079. And I forget the lager yeast I used, I'll put it up there but it just never wanted to stop. It was just chugging along nice and slow, took almost 48, close to 72 hours before it started doing anything. And then when it did, it's nice and slow. And then it, it actually got a nice little, you know, build up and it just kept rocking and rocking and rocking. And I thought it would be done around 1.017, 1.015, according to Beersmith, somewhere in that neighborhood. It got down to 1.012. Yes, <sighs> lower original gravity, much lower final gravity. Puts us at a solid 9% ABV. That's a solid Imperial Pumpkin. Yeah, so we're at nine and we're at 8.7. So I would video all this movement, but I'm not sure how it's gonna work. I'm not sure if it's going to work. 
I'm not sure if I'm going to have a major problem. So yeah, I'm just gonna try to figure it out and hopefully pull as little solid pumpkin over as possible. But it is what it is, I'm excited. I did take a little tiny, tiny taste of after I did the Easy Dens. So you're talking like tiny sample. And I kind of like the lager a little better, but like I said, it was just like taking a teaspoon, not even. So we'll have to see once they're done, once they're carbonated, um, I would expect a little bit more flavor and pronounced flavor from the ale, but I was noticing a little more from the lager. So let's see how the taste test goes. Cheers. Like I said, the taste test will be within seconds to you, not to me. I'm gonna fill these up. We're gonna start with the ale to the right, just like the fermenter was and lager to the left. All right. Okay, I poured the lager last, so it's still got a nice frothy head. The ale's starting to settle. It's on the right. So, lager, ale, lager, ale. I'm gonna let him decide which one he wants to taste test first, but just a reminder, because I know I already mentioned this, but he wasn't here. So for Drew, the one on the left is the lager, which is 9%. <laughs> and the one on the right, or our right, is the ale, which is 8.7. I mean, what's the difference? <laughs> It smell good. I like even from this far away, you can smell like the spices and everything. Oh, wow. And I did add two teaspoons of bourbon vanilla. Oh, maybe that's what it is. Yeah. And the problem is, it's to not bad to both of them, but it's not balanced because one, I didn't get as much beer. Um, the way I pulled the beer, I had to use my little motorized siphon system. There was no way it was coming out of the front of that fermenter. It was pure thick pumpkin. It was insane. This one has like a more vibrant smell to it. Yeah, and technically we got less lager than we got ale, so the vanilla will be a little stronger, but. I, I guess 8.7. Okay, we're gonna go 8.7 and taste test. Lots of pumpkin, hints of vanilla. I can, actually. That's really good. I can smell the citrus from the tangelo I put in. I didn't notice it at first. Yeah, this one you can smell the citrus, and this one you can't, at least not right now. I don't know, maybe it's because the head died down on this one quicker or what, but. It's got carbonation, but it doesn't feel like the carbonation is fully in suspension yet. I've been speed carbonating it, so. It's nice and rich. It's a tiny bit sweet. Well, I can taste the alcohol, which is the sweet part, so. <laughs> yeah. It was definitely worth brewing, even when I lost some of it due to the pumpkin. Even with the slight, you know, alcohol taste to it because it's so high. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's sweet, it's good. It's like I got a good spice profile to it. And even if you like it dry, which the lager is very dry, that alcohol is perceived as sugar or sweetness, which helps to kind of, if you ever had coffee or something and it's black and you add some sugar mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you can taste the coffee better. It's the same, same, same thing. Almost. It's good. Okay, let's go for lager. Oh, got a lot more like a, like caramel to it. Yeah, it's like vanilla and caramel just all up in your face. And like I said, the caramel, or not caramel, I'm sorry, the bourbon vanilla ratio is a little higher on this one because I had less beer. So, God, I just like the smell. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Make a soap out of this. I'd be like, everybody'd be like, God, he smells good. It has almost like a toffee taste to it. Very caramely, very toffee. It doesn't taste as sweet though. No, it doesn't. Even though it's at nine, it is drier. So, you know, this had a, a residual sweetness, just a tiny bit, because Pierre Smith said it should have got down to 1.017 and it ended at 1.019, so it wasn't far. I think it's the vanilla that's making it kind of taste kind of toffee. And the vanilla ratio is a little higher, and it's because, like I said, I had less beer. A lot more pumpkin left over. <laughs> So. <laughs> what was funny is the ale, I had to put a little bit of gelatin and actually, mm, I'm gonna say the lager is a little clearer, just a little bit more than the ale. The ale, you could see the pumpkin in suspension. Well, in the lager, it was yeah, almost easier. all gone, yeah. So you can tell them apart too, just barely, but yeah. God, I could just go to sleep with that on my nose. <laughs> it smells good. I don't know which one I would do, but did it again. The lager is smoother too, which I expect it. It does taste smoother. I like the lager better. I like a little bit more of the pronounced flavors in the ale, 
but I like the lager for smoothness. It almost has like a, like a, I mean, we can something do half between, lager, half ale. Something between like a, a half of Eisen and a, and a triple. Kind of I do. To it. I didn't taste the triple, but I taste the Hefeweizen. I definitely taste the Hefeweizen. Yeah. And it was a London ale, so it was not a Hefe yeast, not at all. There is a little bit of wheat in here to help carry the flavor. Excuse me. I shouldn't have said that. Now I'm just tasting kind of like a banana flavor. And they're very nice. Something fell. And they're very nice together. I just poured half and half. Oh, you did? Yeah. I'll try it. Don't go, yeah, don't pour it all though, because you don't have half and half, but you can pour a little bit more. I think it tastes very nice together. Very smooth. Yeah, I made three beers. Yeah. <laughs> lager, ale, and el lager, lager, ale, however you want to say it. That's really good. Again, yeah. I think lager is the better of the two. I like the lager for the smoothness, um, and I love, it's almost a, it's almost a bourbon vanilla, almost, or even a dark rum smell and flavor. It, it, next time yeah. I am seriously considering aging some of this in some bourbon barrels or putting some bourbon, you know, shafts in there and just let them soak. I think it would really That'd bring out a nice rich flavor without, you know, <clears throat> making it rich. You know what I'm saying? Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing. Definitely appreciate it. Cheers. Gonna have some more pumpkin ale. Yeah. <laughs> Take some home. Oh yeah, he'll be taking a lot home, trust me. Thank you.